In this video, we're going to look at how we can use the time ruler to control the look of the clips and tracks pane, and we're going to look at some more transport commands for other ways of controlling playback. Now, to begin with, when we position our mouse in the upper part of the time ruler, you'll see the icon changes to this little magnifier icon. What we can do is click, hold, and drag up and down to zoom horizontally like that. And if we position in the same area and get that same magnifier, if we right click and drag up and down, we can zoom the track height vertically like that. So regular click up and down is horizontal zoom and the right click up and down is vertical zoom. And if we just click hold like that and move side to side, we can scroll the display. Our project isn't very long right now, but we can scroll rather than zoom by just click holding and dragging left and right. And the other thing we can do with this is just double click and it'll fit the selection to the window, or if nothing is selected, the entire project. Now, right now, if I select this, this is basically the entire project because there's only this one clip in it. But either way, if I double click like that, it'll zoom to fit the selection or the entire project. Let's zoom a little bit and get our display a bit smaller. And now I'm gonna right click zoom like that just to get us back to a manageable size. Now we can also change the time format here. We can right click in the bar ruler and we get a pop-up menu and we can change the time ruler format. Right now we're at measures, beats, ticks, but that's where we can change it to hours, minutes, seconds, frames, or samples, or milliseconds, for example, like that. And I'm gonna set it back there. And what we can do is have multiple rulers happening and we do that by clicking this plus button and we can add an additional ruler. So right now we have two rulers, the bars and beats on top and the simpty time on the bottom. And if I wanna change the order of them, I can right click and in time ruler formats here, I can click on them to reorder them like that. And I can use the minus button to remove one of them. I'm going to remove the hours, minutes, seconds. And related to this, we have a preference to control the display. If we go to customization and the display tab over here, we have display all times as simpty that we can optionally use. I'm not going to enable that for now. All right, let's look at some transport commands. Now, as we know, stop and start is controlled with the space bar. <laughs> And we looked at how the stop behavior is affected by the option setting. And we can use W to rewind to the beginning of the project, to always get back to the beginning. But we have some other interesting commands to look at right now. Now, if we hit the space bar and then stop, the playback behavior is gonna follow what we have set over here on stop, rewind the now marker. Now it's not enabled. So when I hit stop, it's following the playback position. But what we can do is temporarily bypass that on a one-shot basis by hitting shift with the space bar. So it'll reverse the behavior. Now I'm gonna hit play and then when I hit stop, I'm gonna hit shift with the space bar. And you see it jumped back to the beginning now versus following the playhead. Like it does when I just use the regular space bar. So it reverses the behavior just by adding the shift key. And the same thing works in reverse if you have the behavior set on stop to rewind the now marker. By default, then when I hit shift, it'll do the opposite. I just hit shift and it followed the playhead. So let's take that off. I prefer this default behavior for now, but you can reverse it temporarily with shift space bar. And as we know, control W will toggle the actual parameter itself. Now, the other thing we can use shift space bar for is to solo and audition a selection. Now, for example, right now I have this top one selected. And if I hit shift space bar to start with, we're getting it soloed and auditioned. And when it gets to the end of it, it's gonna stop automatically rather than continuing playback beyond the end of the selection. So that just stopped on its own. And the same thing works if we actually make a selection. Let's say I just want to audition that one bar. I'm gonna hit shift space bar again. And it automatically stops and auditions just that selection. Now, another thing we can do to affect the stopping behavior is under the options, we have stop at project end. So what'll happen is, let's say I position my now time over here. If I hit play, it's gonna stop automatically at the end of the project. And in this case, it's the end of this clip because there's nothing beyond it. So it'll stop automatically at the end versus if I have that disabled, it'll continue playback beyond the end. And the other thing I wanna show you just while we're 
talking about playback like this, if you're stopping playback with some of these commands and you end up getting some stuck notes, some hanging notes, some MIDI notes, there's an emergency panic button, and that's this button over here, and that'll sort of reset and stop all audio that's happening in case something's feeding back or stuck. It's an emergency panic button. Now let's look at the transport module itself. We have the buttons here that are equivalent to the key commands I've been talking about. Of course, I much prefer using key commands, but if you're a mouser, you can certainly stop and start with these buttons. And rewind, if you keep your finger on it, will rewind the now time until you release the button. Same thing with forward. And this will bring us right back to the beginning, and this will go to the end of the project. And this, as we've seen, positions the now time. And further, we have here meter and tempo and other information here for Example, this is the panic button, which we just saw, and this temporarily stops the audio engine, but as soon as you hit play, it'll start again. If it's disabled, let me hit play. So it starts again. Here we see the sample rate, 44.1, and the bit depth for the session. And here we have the tempo. You can click there and adjust either by typing in or using the plus minus. You've seen me do that when we were auditioning clips from the browser. And here in the meter section, I just clicked on it and it brought up the meter key signature box. So it's displaying the default meter 4.4, but I can click there and set at whatever measure the now time is at or wherever measure I want to set here. I can specify a unique bar meter or key signature for that specific bar. And then I can, of course, advance it and add another one in later. So that's one way of adding meter changes. Another thing that we can do is go under the project menu here and go insert meter key change. And here we get the same box that pops up. So you can do it that way as well. And finally, under the views menu, we can use the shortcut alt shift six or the menu command here and go to meter key and we get a meters key window that opens up and we can use the plus or minus buttons to add key signatures and time signatures at various locations. And we can manage them from here that way. And it's docked by default, but of course you can undock it as you can any window. And I'm just going to get rid of it for now. So that's another way of controlling meter changes. And let's hit D to close the dock. So quick recap of what we looked at in this video. When we position the mouse in the top half of the time ruler, we can click, hold, and drag down to zoom horizontally. We can right-click and drag down to zoom vertically. And we can double-click to fit either the selection or if nothing's selected, the entire project to the window. And we can right click on the bar ruler to set the time ruler format. And we can add additional ruler formats by using this plus button. And once we have additional rulers, we can right click and reorder them. We can use the preferences page customization display tab to force all displays to SMPTE time. And transport commands, we use spacebar to stop and start playback. W will bring us back to the beginning. And let's not forget my personal favorite control page up and control page down to move forward and backward by a bar. We can also use shift spacebar to reverse the behavior of what we have set here on the on stop behavior. If we want it to follow playback or not, hit shift with spacebar when you're actually stopping and it'll reverse the behavior. And of course, control W will toggle the actual selection itself. And then we also used shift spacebar to audition a selection, either a selection in the ruler like that or a selection, a clip that's selected and it'll stop playback at the end. And we also have the option to stop playback at the end of the project versus having it continue beyond the end, which is good if you're sending MIDI messages or other kinds of information. And we have our basic transport commands. Holding this down will continually fast forward or continually rewind, go to the beginning, go to the end, etc. And we can set meter changes by clicking here and calling up the box or by using the view menu command or the project menu command. See you for more in the next video.